any major injuries from bulls during this stretch. Because you know they're going to happen. There's always injuries. Do you have the Bills having a major injury anywhere on the hit list? Milano goes down. Oh, come on. Six games. Come on. Six games. That's like stealing. <laughs> <laughs> Deep ass. <laughs> you okay? You okay? All right. Yes. We're good. You just had to get even with me. I did. You had to mom seatbelt me mom just seat one you, more time. You grabbed my nipple ring. It wasn't fair. <laughs> and said my boobs were droopy. He did. He said my moves were droopy. It is all on film. It is all on film. <laughs> it's Check all on the tape. Film. Check the tape. <laughs> Check the tape. The big yeah. eye in the sky does it not is, lie. It is certainly on <laughs> film. Milano. It's like... It's like stealing. <laughs> <laughs> I will say... Matt Breida. <laughs> Matt Breida goes down for a half. For a half? Yes. Yvonne Davis, the second half. <laughs> you know what, guys? I'm out of here. <laughs> you! <laughs> you! <laughs> you! You're cool! <laughs> you! I'm out. Hello fellow Bills fans, Sean Rogers, Realtor and lead of the Mr. Rogers Homes team. Did you know that real estate is one of the best ways to build wealth and right now is one of the best times to own an investment property in Arizona? Please reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions so we can take the next step to your financial freedom here in the Valley of the Sun utilizing real estate. As always, God bless America and go Buffalo! Come join Paul and Mario at Diamond Hawk Golf Course Saturday, September 11th for the hashtag sports not so invitational. Come golf with these idiots in this four-person scramble, which will feature golf with cart, dinner, hole-in-one contest, silent auction, and a live show with all proceeds benefiting Matthew 25 Farms. Registration can be found in the description of this video. And if you'd like to sponsor, email us at htagsports at gmail.com to help raise money for this great charity. You? Are you signing up for that? Uh, I'm not. Yeah. Yes. Actually, it has to be rapid, though. Yeah, like, it has to be. <laughs> that was all I was going to say. I'll, to, I'll argue against your record. So if you have them going 12 and 5, I'll go oh 5 my God, 12. Don't do that to yourself. It's bad. You did what Nine you did last seven. year. Oh, God. <clears throat> Thank God they added another game to the schedule. <laughs> so you don't have to hear 9 and 7 it anymore. Maybe 9 and 8, guys. Is that the new? That's It's still statistically the same, right? 9 and 8 to 9 and 7. Like It's still statistically Close. basically the same. Because because ten and seven is a lot different than nine and seven in my opinion. Adding a win that's a three that's a that's a differential of three. Still is not good. Right, nine and eight though, like you that might sucks. Say, that's close to ten and seven. Nine and eight is the Eli Manning of wins. Still beat the f of Tom Brady. <laughs> Get out of here, Get out of here, Eli. All right, week one home. Is that home? Yeah. Week one, home against the Steelers. Win. Okay. Win. Um, with an aging Roethlisberger, even though... Didn't they lose a guy recently? Didn't they lose somebody recently? Yeah, James Conner. They lost Conner? They lost Conner. I mean, to injury. Did they lose somebody to injury? Uh, corner. Nothing. They lost their starting corner. Towards ACL in practice. Oh, all right. Not Joe Hayden? I can't remember <laughs> Joe Hayden. Joe Hayden, he tears it every day. Okay. I'm sure Joe Hayden is just part rubber at this point. <laughs> okay, so do you have a win or loss against Joe Steelers? Hayden? retired. Nobody told him. Who is he, Larry Fitzgerald? Yep. Uh, I, I'll go with a win. I think uh, a very emotional opening day win for the Buffalo Bills against yeah. the Pittsburgh Steelers. Once again, beating, beating the tar out of them. I'll go with that 23-17. Uh, Oh, we're going to score predictions. I too. might as well. I don't care. It doesn't matter. It'd be fun. There's, there's a lot of ways we can go with this. Oh, score predictions scare the piss out of me. I know. They're funny. All right. At Miami, week two. Loss. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa, whoa. Listen, I know, I know Josh Allen's junior varsity team is Miami. <laughs> <laughs> However, 
Uh, I just, um, you know, you it's come, too early in the season. It's, it's there's that. gonna be things outside of the control of the game that will affect the outcome. Like it's gonna be like a a thirty to twenty eight game, but in what it, there'll be like bizarre things that happen that aren't predictable. You know what I mean? Like. Mackenzie drops a kickoff. I was going to say, so like a special teams, like a kickoff TD return a, that a separates the game. Or something, right. something okay. that's bizarre. You know what I mean? Not not a natural loss, but a loss of like, hey, yo, we, we pipped all three phases of the game. You know what? I'm I'm not – I understand your perspective there, but I'm going to go – I'm going to go with the win here because Miami's starting a quarterback who nobody has told them he's throwing the ball with the wrong hand yet. So <laughs> have you seen him throw with his left hand? Who, Tua? He's probably right-handed. <laughs> Washington at home against Washington. Fitz magic. Fitz magic. Fitz magic, baby. It's week three. He'll still be starting. Cue the clip of him screaming like a girl. <laughs> I am actually going to go loss home against Washington because Washington has Antonio Gibson, who scares the living crap out of me. That doesn't scare me. Yeah, Antonio Terry, Terry McLaurin me. and Antonio Gibson scare the living hell out of me. Uh, so I'm going to go with that's like the one weird one that you always seem to lose. That's the one weird one. I don't. I don't. Here's the craziest part about this. All right. Going back to week one, and I, like I said, I, I want to make this rapid, but I just want to make this point. You're coming in the first week against the Steelers, second week against the Dolphins, third week against the Washington Redskins. Yep. Or Washington football team. I'm yep. sorry. Of course I have it. Those three front lines are going to tell you how your offensive line is going to go. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that, okay. that Washington defense Those is three, no oh joke. My that defensive God. line is no joke. Pain. Um, Montez Sweat. Sweat. You got that freak on the Chase Young. And then the, another first-round pick. You got Ker- Kerrigan's also there, too. But they came into Buffalo a couple of years ago and they had a – um, but those, that front line, offensive line for the Buffalo Bills, is going to be tested in those first three weeks. Yep. I have them winning that one, so we both have them at two and one. But you have them right. losing against yeah. Washington. Ooh, that's interesting. At home against Houston, win. This is really this is, uh, yeah, this, yeah. They're, they're, uh, they're at Kansas City week five. Loss. Yeah, I'm kind of with you on that one. You know, it's just. I, I look at it this way, right? If it were at home, I'd probably give it to Buffalo, but it's in Kansas City. Uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking Kansas City has. I never lose it. an arrowhead. Well, Kansas City has trouble once the running backs start to wear down, and that's always been the Andy Reid thing, right? Because yes. he's so running back dependent, and he doesn't really have a committee. No. That really, it doesn't ever seem to work out. All the running backs seem to burn out by the time they get to the end of the season. That's when Kansas City is usually beatable. Right, because running backs are beat at that point. You guys are scoring sixty, you know, sixty points a game. So, Kansas City week five is a tough beat. So we're, we both got the three and two. Yeah. At Tennessee, Close. I'm gonna give them the win at Tennessee. I for you know what? I'm. This is what you've done to me. Okay. What? This is how freaking stubborn I am now because of you. Why? I used to be able to change my mind, guys. <laughs> I can't anymore because it is, dude. Why? Why? Oh, yeah. Pride in principle. <laughs> I have picked Buffalo going to Tennessee and losing for like the last three years. That is very true. Okay. You Even always have them losing I Tennessee. always have them losing in Tennessee. I can't back out of that now. Yeah. Okay. And if y'all put nine and seven, I'm smacking the piss out of them. <laughs> Point being is this. I think Tennessee just just that that team just is something about that team. I mm, I just don't like it. You know what's fascinating, right? Yes. So if you look at, go back and look at the teams, the games that you think Buffalo's going to win, games you think Buffalo's going to lose, right? Yes. Okay, so Steelers have Najee Harris. Just look at the running back position, right? Steelers have Najee Harris. I don't think that's really anything to be worried about right now. Miami has whoever, Miles Gaskin. Who cares? You love Miles Gaskin. Stop it. So like, plus, I've watched a lot of tape of him. You've watched a lot of tape. Um, Washington has Antonio Gibson. Yes. Terrified of him. Terrified of him. Texans have... Your boy. Yeah, but he's beat at this point. So Texans have nobody <laughs> to be concerned about. Right? The Chiefs have everyone. Have several <laughs> players to be concerned about the running back position. Titans have obviously Henry. Yes. Right? But 
why is it that the because the old school football guy in me still gets nervous about teams with really good running backs, although teams throw the ball 45 times a game. Yes. Why do I still get nervous about teams with really good running backs when they only throw the ball 45 times a game? Because, why is that still a concern? Because still the, the age old adage is this. If the team is happens to get a lead on you, they could run the ball and keep it out of your offense's hands, which is the most dangerous part of the Buffalo Bills right now is this offense. Yeah. So okay. if you're able to k- keep the ball – now, it used to be the Bills had to do that to other teams because – You had to grind it. You yeah. had to grind it. Yeah. But now – you look at teams that come into Buffalo or have to play Buffalo, their mindset may be of an old school mentality where we got to keep the ball out of 17's hands, especially in the damn red zone right. because he'll kill us. So teams with above average running games can affect that. That's why it worries you when you have that old school mentality. A lot of these other coaches have that old school mentality. You know, like Vrabel has that mentality. You don't think Tomlin has that mentality? Flores? Um, Even Reed. To Rivera? Reed, Reed, when he gets the postseason, yeah. does as well. Like yeah. he, his, The drives that Kansas City has, typically, in the later part of the season, they do have a tendency to be It would be very interesting runs. to see that how, that, how that manifests throughout the year. How teams will, will the time of possession battle, which was in Buffalo's favor last year, will it not be in their favor this year? Week 7 is a bye. Uh, you're back. When? <laughs> Win that one every year. We'll be in the car that week, though, guys. So oh, yeah, not, week seven. Always buys. Yeah, that's, uh, let's see here. That's the week of uh, right before Halloween. Uh, Halloween. Uh, they have a game against Miami uh, right. at home. Right. Yeah, that's a win. Yeah, that's Four and two? Four and two. Um, no, no, no. You, you don't have them. I had them losing. Oh, okay. I got yeah. a three and three. You got it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's week nine. Did I miss a game in there? So Houston, the win was three and two. Or the week five was Kansas City, they were three and two. Yeah. Week six was what? Tennessee. Three and three. Yeah, there you go. So and then four. week seven. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you you're at four and three. I'm at five and two. Okay. At Jaguars. Herman Myers not allowed to win any games at an NFL level. He won't be coaching that week. <laughs> He'll have somebody else there. He will have he will have retired again. All right, five to three, you beat the Jags. Yeah. But after a bye, who's after Jets? After Jaguars, the Jets. That might be You're not going with the trap game, are you? I'm not going with the trap game. I'm saying that more focus will probably be on the Jets than on the Jags after the bye. That's my point. They're gonna focus on all of them. My point is this. At that point, the Jaguars. No, it's going to be interesting, though, to see Allen versus um, um, Tangled. What's his name? Trevor Lawrence. Rapunzel. That's what it was. Rapunzel. <laughs> so I, I got them win against the Jags. Yes, and I have to beat the Jets. Okay. All right. So what am I at? Six and three? Yep, that would be right. And you're at seven, seven and two. two. Okay. You did have the run in the gauntlet last year. Sure did. Very interesting. And they almost did. Sure did. Uh, Colts at home. The Colts even have a quarterback right now? Not at this point. I mean, I mean it's it's going to be interesting to see Allen versus Trubisky, though. Stop it. Or, you it's know what? It's not going to happen. More likely, Allen versus Foles. That is bad to say <laughs> more likely. Foles is going to be a Colt, guys. Just, just get ready for it. I mean, that's the next de facto, right? Because you take yeah. a look at Reich. Who would be the most ideal quarterback for Reich to have but Foles? But Foles. But the thing is, literally, if two guys in the car in in Lockport, New York, can tell you that Foles to the Colts makes too much sense, you know for a fact that no everybody bullshit. knows the, that that's going to be expensive. They're, and then oh, you're yeah. just reuniting Foles and Wentz again. You think Foles is going to want to do that when Wentz could be out five to 12 weeks? Yeah. Like, Foles is going to want to go Quinn Nelson is the same injury. Isn't that weird? It's so weird. I think they just planned a trip together. <laughs> uh, this is week 11, so I'm willing to say the Colts have figured it out by then, and they drop to the Colts at home. I I really like that Colts team. I, they, I really do. Like, they gave Buffalo, they gave yeah. Buffalo fits last year, and I, I'm um, really willing to I, I just can't see on the them. chin there. I don't know. I like that team. I think they lost some key players on that defense as far as the Colts go to repeat 
what they need to do. Uh, Malik Hooker is now down in Dallas. I, I just thought he was an excellent safety. Um, I know one man doesn't make the entire defense but for me, and I don't think the Buffalo Bills will lose that game. So I have them at 7-3. and three. Yeah, and I'm at 7-3. and three. I'm going to have them dropping them. All right, sir. All right, you're at New Orleans. Win. 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 Who's going to be the quarterback by then? Winston or Tebow? <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm still Taysom imagining. Hill. I'm still imagining it to be Taysom, Taysom Hill at this point. Thirty-one year old Taysom Hill. Their wagons are tied to him. You know, like it's. We still don't know what the contract details look like. <laughs> like Taysom Hill's contract is like okay, all right. If the sun rises on the fourth Monday, <laughs> and Mercury is in lemonade or something like that. Oh, lemonade. Like it's, Oh, well. Retrograde, is that what they say? Yeah, retrograde. Okay. Looking at what that team was without Drew Brees, I am not concerned about that team. You know, you know what Emmanuel Sanders thought of that team without yeah. Drew Brees? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Come to that end. So, uh, let's see here. So now we're at 8-3. and three. Uh, yeah. Home against the Patriots. Win. 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 I got them at 9-3. 9-3. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're at Tampa for Week 14. Now, question, with that division being Ooh. what it is, is Tampa in cruise control by week 14? So they probably just have to win one to win the division at that point, right? Mm. Are they in cruise control? Because this game means nothing to them, no. right? A and AFC versus NFC, this game means nothing to Tampa. Yeah, true, nothing. true. Um, and, I, and I say that, and guys, let me, let, me, let me put some context around why I say that. So yes. non-conference games, and from a tiebreaker scenario, while well, the record's important, right? I don't want to. I don't want to dispel that. That that is true. The win is a win, right? Yeah. Yeah. But in a tiebreaker scenario, the non-conference game just doesn't figure in, right? It's just it's not as important. I think the Bills will lose to uh, to Tampa, Tampa, setting up the ultimate. You know. Well, you're you're such a WWE guy. You think you look at this like, oh, the Bills will do the job to set them up for WrestleMania. This is this is you know what <laughs> the Buffalo Bills losing to Tampa is the SummerSlam match that leads up to the next yeah, WrestleMania. That's what, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You're with me then. Okay. Yeah, I do have them losing to Tampa here too. So, <laughs> so I get nine it. and four. Nine and four. Still, you know, good good uh, shit. You're at Carolina week. I'm sorry, Carolina at home week fifteen. Oh, great! Inner squad scrimmage. <laughs> I can't wait to see those. It's like the Hall of Fame game. <laughs> well, this, this one's TBD, so this one's to be determined. So there's no date set on this one. It is a December game against the Southern team, but yeah, I, I got. I, I, I think it'll be Carolina. Yeah, I think it's going to be. A, there'll be a lot of storylines throughout that week. It'll be yeah. fun to watch. Uh, Darnold coming back to, to to play Buffalo, and right. um, you know, it could be a, it could be one of those things. Darnold has hasn't performed horribly against the Bills in his no. career. No, but he hasn't fared very, very well. But the point is, um, there'll be a lot of storylines for that game. I still have Buffalo winning it. They're going to ten and three. Yeah, I'm. I'm ten and four. Ten and four. So week 16, 17, and eighteen feature two divisional games to close out the season. Crazy, right? Important point, right? Yes. One non-conference game, two divisional games. So you're at the Patriots week sixteen. That's a win. That's a win. Are you just? Are you just trying to mess with Ten and the five. nation? Ten and five. I'm not trying to mess with the nation. I always have splits with New England. Eleven and five. I always have splits with New England. Always. You are you are consistent there. Yes. Eleven and five. Yes. But you're allowed to be wrong. It's it's okay. Hey, I'm often wrong. Hashtag nine and seven. <laughs> uh, you, a you have Atlanta at home week seventeen, day after New Year's. Atlanta? Yeah. Atlanta at home? Yep. I believe that Atlanta will be up 35-7 to seven at halftime, and then Bills will win 42-35. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Tell me if you've heard this story before. Tell me if this is familiar. Uh, no. They're going <laughs> to Atlanta. Just, <laughs> what? I just, people, are, people are liking and, you know, whatever. But, no, I, um, yeah, it's Atlanta, I don't think... I think the Bills might score 56 in that game. <laughs> Their defense is awful. I don't know who's on defense. Their there. defense is awful. That game might be a 56-48 game. Yeah, that defense is just terrible. So the, I got the Bills at now um, 11-5. 11-5. I am at 12-4. and four. 
Okay. 12 and 4, nice. Yeah, I think so. I think that's how that works. Then the last game he was the Jets, right? Like, last game's against the Jets. Um, I think the Bills have to win that game. If, did I have them splitting with Miami? Yeah, I yeah. have splitting with Miami. They have to win that game to take the division from Miami. Oh, that's so interesting. They're going to go 12 and 5, but they will own the tiebreaker with the 12 and 5 Dolphins. We're not going to do you picking the Dolphins schedule because no, 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 no. That's going to look. I like. just think that I, I, now thirteen and four all day long. No, listen, thirteen and four all day long. Their schedule is not that scary. But if anything has taught us about the past, Paul, no games again, any given Sunday. But the point is this: if there's anything that this channel does remotely well. Is that we're not homers. No. Yeah, we get criticized for some, not some being. Some players we love. I understand yeah. that. There's a, yeah. there's a Dane Jackson, A.J. McCarron, Matt Breida vibe going on over here. Yeah. You know, it's a very give me hope- Mongo all day. Yeah. I'm, I'm the very hopey, changey guy. So yeah. I was like, oh, I really like that guy. He's mm-hmm. got a lot of, po- oh, I almost said it. He's got, yep. He's got, I almost said a lot of potential. A lot of your players are still can't get yeah. on rides at Final Fantasy Island. It's fine. <laughs> Point being is that um, I, I I will give credit where credit is due with other teams. I think Miami is a very strong team. I don't think the Patriots should be dismissed. Now the Jets, Soleil, I love Soleil. I love that coach. Yeah, but you know, for that. year one, it's, it's it is going to be a struggle. It's but gonna a, it's going to be a joke. I mean, McDermott came over as a defensive coach, went to the playoffs, nine and seven, true, but went to the playoffs. Playoffs. So <laughs> playoffs. playoffs? I just hope we can win a game. Um, so that being said, I have seen what the other teams in the division have done. I've always been a proponent that you got to take care of the division first. And I am not going to just say Bills are going to walk over six and zero in the division. You're going to walk over everybody. No, I don't. I don't think it's going to happen at all. Well, I will say the Bills schedule this year isn't as formidable as last year because last year there was a definitive. This is the hardest part of your schedule. Yes. Right in the like there was. It was like a five-game stretch where you're like, you got to win three of these games. No ifs, ands, or buts. If you walk out with less than three wins, your season is now on fire, mm-hmm. right? I don't feel that way about the schedule this year. No. Maybe maybe come week three, week four, when things start shaping up, we feel differently. But uh, I think this is a very easy road to 13 wins. I think it's very easy to walk to 13 wins with the schedule. I, the schedule doesn't bother me at all. I mean, you, you, you go through the schedule – and you see dirt, certain themes throughout. Like you said, first three or four weeks, they're playing teams with amazing defensive fronts and good running games. Yeah. Then it starts to shift. You play Mahomes and Brady right. coming under there. And okay. Sure do. So you have the potential for this to be a roller coaster year of different types of themes for games that you're going to have. And, you know, then you play Carolina and Atlanta, mm-hmm. who are teams that are still rebuilding themselves. Okay. You should take it out on them. Right. <laughs> Fine. That's it. That is it. Um, so, okay. Now, to put a bow on this episode, which we thought was going to be rapid, but, you know, schedule's usually long anyway. Doing a 17-game schedule in 24 minutes, I think, is pretty good. Yeah.